Let me see if there's a which Robin are you quiz online. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many Robins in yeah. in Dark Knight Mythos. Is um I can name, I can name at least four, five. Right. Got uh, Red Hood, whoever he is. He's so not, Re Red he's, Hood is Jason, uh, Todd, Jason Todd, who is, is the second Robin. And obviously, is Dick Grayson, who's is he? He's Nightwing. Isn't he, he he goes on to become Nightwing. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. There's. Uh, Carrie Kelly, who is the Robin in The Dark Knight Returns, like future girl Robin. Yeah, I quite like Robin Carrie Kelly. Robin being with a Y, isn't it? Some shit like that. No, no, she's, oh, she's, she's, oh, she's, she's still just Robin, yeah. Here we go. Run at me. There's... Let me get this right. It's Jason Todd. There's Tim... Tim... We did Tim... Do, do we do Tim Drake? No, no, no. no. Oh, there's Tim Drake, and there's Damian Wayne, who's briefly Robin as well. I knew Damian Wayne, but that was him because you mentioned it earlier. <laughs> is that after um, Raj Uncle? Downloads his personality into Damien. Oh, it, no, Damien already exists. Yeah, Damien yeah. exists. It doesn't work though. Like I think it's a failed plan to put his personality into Damien's body. Surprise! You know, Bats, I always thought there was a spark between us. <laughs> well, now there is. Oh, it's an electric one. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Should have seen that coming. Come and get me, Bats. I double dare ya. I like the little domino mask that she's wearing versus. Here we go. Apprehend Harley Quinn. Let's do it, Harley. Oh, that's a cold can. Oh, ow. Nothing to remind you that you're drinking room temperature beer by adding a can to the vessel you're holding. It becomes a lot colder. That felt like a more insightful comment when I thought about it, and then I said it, and it sounded fucking dumb. But there we go. That's normal for you. Thanks. No problem. Easy. Who's next? <laughs> I feel like the countering is also quite a Batman move. I can imagine Batman just kind of standing there, yeah. waiting for someone to run at them, and then when they're close enough, he counters their own attack. That feels very Batman. Yeah. Oh. Like, there's a thing... V for Vendetta deals with it a little bit, but I can't, I can't remember what it was that first brought it up, but it's the interesting thing of, like, why would you wear a mask? Obviously, a big part of it is, like, identity and stuff like that, but there's another... There's a fair bit of weight to say that one of the advantages of wearing a mask is people can't find you much harder to read. Yeah. yeah. And also, it's harder to shoot you in the face because you yeah. wear an armoured mask, yeah. which is one of the reasons V does it. Yeah. But equally, like, you can be stood there and you're pretty, like, tensed and ready for combat, but if you're in a mask and like that, that's much harder to read. And I think, v, yeah, they use that in V for Vendetta, and I think Batman uses that quite a lot. It's one of the, the kind of you, the emotional barrier you've got there. Or, like, it's one of the other reasons that, like, uh, modern stormtroopers, like SWAT teams and stuff, wear masks so that, like, they look more intimidating. Like, it's scary. Yeah. We, you're you're, you're familiar, I assume, with the uh, Stanford Prison Experiment. And yes. Obviously, there's huge problems with that. It's a massive fucking thing. But one of the things they, they find is... Boy, do you dehumanise people really quickly if you put mirrored sunglasses on them. Yep. Oh. Not having access to the... Like, the, all the guards in that were specifically told to wear, like, mirrored aviators. And it really helps people distance themselves from a thing of, like, thinking that... Activated. I'm safe. These people aren't people. Because you, like, put a huge barrier there by having mirrored shades on. Was it the eyes, the window to the soul? Exactly, yeah, basically. You know I don't get that. What, the eyes thing? Yeah. That's probably because you're autistic. Where? And you hate eye contact. I don't. I mean, I don't like eye contact. Quite to be fair. I really? Find it, I find it. You quite, do a lot of eye contact. I know. I find it quite unnerving sometimes. But like, to make a, a connection with someone, you've kind of got to, right? Yeah. Well, you see, I can do it, but people are like, "How do you read? You know, you read emotion in the eyes. Are they smiling in their eyes?" And I'm like, "I'm sorry. What do they have mouths in their eyes too?" <laughs> have I, have oh I no! Smiling that? with your eyes is. Have, have you never seen it when someone is smiling with their face but not their eyes, and you're like, "You're smiling, but." I get it's there, the Tom Cruise thing. If you feel like you're like you're smiling, but you're also clearly a fucking psychopath. Has yeah. anyone ever seen or read the the Sandman Neil Gaiman? I saw the recent Netflix series. I quite enjoyed it, but the, I haven't read it now. There is a character in yeah. that show. Oh, the Eyeball Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. who is basically Corinthian. Yeah, yeah. The, the eyes are the window to the soul, and like they they take that to its logical extreme. Yeah. Tre tremendous. I mean, I've not seen the series yet. I, I desperately want to, but like tremendous series of graphic novels. Have you? The, I, I enjoyed the Netflix thing, and, and people I know who enjoy the novel, the graphic novels, have like uh, a friend of ours who who infamously hates every adaptation ever of anything because she said, "Well, they've missed this part out." Genuinely, really enjoyed 
Uh, Sandman. I'm really looking forward so, to watching it. It's, like, it's good. I, I really liked it. What some people don't realise is like Sandman exists in the DC universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like um, he, I didn't realise that think, until I watched it. I knew it was for DC Comics. Yeah. And also, right, fucking side note, hate that it's called DC Comics because the C stands for comics. It's a... District Comics. It's a... It's a... It's a... It's a, it's a RAS syndrome thing. Or you know, pin you know, number. Yeah, well, yeah. There will, have you ever heard the phrase RAS syndrome? No. It stands for redundant acronym syndrome syndrome. <laughs> because it's it's the thing that it's described like pin number or ATM machine or those things. But DC yeah, Comics yeah. is the same because it's Detective Comics Comics. Oh, I thought it was this. Oh, okay. Yeah, Detective because Batman's first one was Detective Comics. That's pretty cool. For obvious reasons, because he's a detective. But yeah, like but, some people don't realize like, in the Sandman yeah. series, like um, in the first couple of issues, he teams up with uh, John Constantine. Like he visits Martian Manhunter. Yeah, they they do, they 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 uh, Constantine's in the Netflix one. Oh, cool. I, I didn't know that, that they adapted him into the show as well. Done really well, um, I'd say as well. Leave it. I know what you're thinking and don't. Let him see it. I, I'm looking forward to it. Very good cast in it as well. I enjoyed Constantine. Almost everyone is really good in it. Yeah. Have you seen American Psycho? Me- I, 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 I've written a dissertation on American Psycho, so yes, I, very yeah. many times, yeah. Yeah, fair. Yeah, because it was, it was when I mentioned about you know, the eyes of the thing, you're like, um, you haven't seen it, have you, right? Nope. So Christian Bale's psychopath acting is based explicitly on Tom Cruise. Uh, is it really? Yeah, I, so, I didn't know that. I know, Bale des- I know, I know a lot about American Bale Psycho. describes Tom Cruise as intensely friendly and dead behind the eyes. And that's what he wanted to channel for. Um, this is coming What's from. It? Yeah, I know, right from Bale. Yeah. Bale, paradigm of being a twat. Yeah. Yeah, Bale's not a great guy. No. Wow, that's yeah, you always get these stories of him from on sets where he was a twat. Yeah. And he's like he, police were called to his mother's house because he was violently threatening his his mother and sister. That's pretty grim. Oh shit! I always forget that he's Welsh. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, comes, 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 comes. Oh, where's the where's the where's the control? Ah, where is the trigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they, boy, are they delivering the true Batman experience? There we go, there we go. I can get to it now. <laughs> that was that was real. That <laughs> <laughs> was very good, actually. If I wasn't under pressure, oh no, are they killing him? Oh, they're killing me. No, you're in the yeah, you were in the lecky water. Oh, oh, I guess Harley's gonna gloat on yep. now. This kills the bat. How very dear- oh, I think I know what I have to do, okay. But yeah, he specifically cites Tom Cruise's infamous Oprah Winfrey interview. I've never seen it. Where he like starts leaping around like a maniac and talking about Scientology. I, as his like- I actually, he, I, like, I like Tom Cruise as an actor, but he, he probably is- I mean, he's a Scientologist, so probably a crazy person. He's one of those actors where most of the films he's been in are pretty good. Yeah. It's hard, like- You've clearly never seen Vanilla Sky. I haven't, but it's like- even when Cruise is not the best part of it, his films are fairly good. Like, what was the one with, um, uh, the one with the man who played the Joker? Jared Leto? No. Heath Ledger? No, older. Uh, Jack, uh, Jack Nicholson? Jack Nicholson. Uh, what's the film with him and Jack Nicholson? The army one. Oh, uh... A Few, a few Good Men, Few Good Men. It's a great movie. Yeah, and, and Tom Cruise is probably the weakest part of that film. But he's in a good movie. And yet the film is still good, and like, and someone made this point to me once, and it has stuck with me so much that... Tom Cruise is almost entirely in good films, even if he is not good in them. Yeah. Other than the reboot of The Mummy that we don't talk about. Exactly. Vanilla Sky. What's Vanilla Sky? Watch it. It's like no, the worst No, nothing film about ever. how you're selling it has made me want to watch okay, it. Okay, so Vanilla Sky is basically, if you have um, sex out of wedlock, the whole world is going to end. And it's got Gwyneth fucking Paltrow in it. Oh. Like, seriously, it is probably the- too busy washing her vagina. This was just for the vagina steaming. But it's literally like the one of the worst Jesus. films I've ever seen in my whole life. How do I, how do I get out of here? What are we doing? Ah, 19 seconds. Yes, I'm detecting real fast. Nailed it. So I assume that opens up some earlier doors for you as well that you can yes. now open. Yeah, that's very Metroid. I mean, if I wanted to get all the Riddler trophies, I could double back and go to all the places. Yeah, no, 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 no. Our time is not infinite. You mean you're gonna leave? You don't just live here now? You know what? Now I'm starting to think about it. There's a surprising amount of overlap between Batman and Samus. Good. Yeah. Listen, I'll go try Bounty Hunter, surprisingly strong code of personal morals. Secret, some... secret identity? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's... 
and, and reliance on armor and gadgets and that kind of thing rather than the inherent powers. I can see why Metroid was actually a good place to start looking for how to do... Because this has got to be one of the first, if not the first, like, big 3D Batman game. Um, there's a Telltale Batman series, but I don't think That might it's... be later than this. I think the Telltale think ones are a bit too, more actually. recent, yeah. But so if, if you're looking for somewhere to start, I can actually see why Metroid's a pretty good one, because... So the Metroid games are, inf like, especially the 3D ones, the Prime ones on the GameCube, are infamous for their really good sense of atmosphere. Oh. They really nail this. Oh, oh dear. They really nail this. You land on, like, a fucking, like, barren alien world, and you feel, s like, it's just you. There's Like, it's all first person, and you feel so, like, isolated and alone in the beginnings of it. And it has, like, a really subtle soundtrack that works to, like, just build up this atmosphere so well. So and that's the feel I'm getting from this in a lot of ways as well. It's a very, very atmospheric game, yeah. this one. I think I need more gadgetry to do this properly. Yeah. So there's one big major gadget, which is maybe my favourite gadget of the game that I've not gotten yet. So we'll come back to this, maybe. But that'll be more because this is, you know, bonus stuff. Is this all just for a Riddler? I boy? think so. There's no more plot points in here, I don't think. What's your po like plot goal at the moment? Is it so? I think specifically. Let's find out. <laughs> I've been chasing Harley, so I've destroyed. Yeah. Destroy the Titan production facility in the botanical gardens. Titan is like the venom he's shite, isn't it? Yeah. It is like a super venom, basically. Yeah. So he's refined the ven the venom formula to make Titan. So like the surprise, the henchman that he's been sending out with the big mutant guys, or the henchman he sent out me earlier on, is a Titan inmate. So, yeah. So. And Bane was just another kind of subject in that, yeah. Yes, so Bane's been like a test subject to get the Titan formula. And Dr. Young's been like basically draining the venom. So does Bane like endogenously produce venom or is he just constantly on it? He's constantly on it. Yeah. I think uh, he's actually broken his habit several times in the comic books. Oh, speaking of Batman's lame villains, this is the cell of Calendar Man. Oh yeah, Calendar Man's a thing, I remember that, yeah. yeah. Julie? Sometimes feel like that's my life. His what, calendar man? Obsessively staring at calendar day. Well, then if that was the case, you'd actually use a calendar properly. His name's Julian Day. There he is. <laughs> Julian Day. He's actually, That's actually quite good. He's actually kind of, like, chilling, because like he's, he's one of these more conventional serial killers, but he kills on, like, holidays. <laughs> You've not got the difference between pause and back yet. No, I have not. One uses your right hand and there one uses go. your left. There you there go. Your um, upgrades menu is your left hand. Upgraded, I've already got that already. Sonic Shock Battering. I'm getting past You go that there was a gel one. Allowing easier deciphering of security systems. Are you f no, I was gonna say you've been managing to get fine with that. Yeah. It, I, these are all kind of superfluous ones. I've gotten like the, the takedown, the combat takedown, which yeah. is the only one I really wanted. The sequel does a better job of like tech getting, tree stuff. Yeah. yeah. Again, this is weird that this is conceptually a tech tree, but it's presented as a weird la timeline. Like, it's not a tree. It doesn't. Oh, shit. It doesn't obviously show what comes from what. Because, like, in, in Shadow of Mordor, for example, it was clearly a tree where you. I think Shadow of Mordor was obvious. always too complicated, but I could do with that a bit more. Well, yeah, because you, had, you had a tree for your bow, a tree for your sword, and a tree for your dagger. Because that's the thing, it tried to, you know, split everything in the game into combat, shooty, and stealthy. Because that's basically well, that's what Assassin's Creed does nowadays. It's like, these are your three ways of tackling a game. is fighting, stealthing, or arrowing. Now, I think Two-Face's cell is here somewhere. And the, like one side of the oh, cell... Oh, Two-Face in this. No, he doesn't appear in this one. Oh, yeah. His, his cell is here, though. Right. right. And I'm pretty sure that when I find it... There we, there we go. One side is all nice and orderly and pristine. The other side <laughs> that, that's quite good. Yeah. And with it been split down the middle by a vote dent thing. That's quite cool. To be, I like him as a villain. He's not terrific, but like, uh, it's actually quite a late I think... villain. So like, here we go. His first appearance was oh, 1942. No, he's okay, no, it's pretty old. Earlier, yeah. earlier than I thought. I, I mean, he's clearly like a kind of like Chicago mobster of that era in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, this is his, his inspiration. I think he was done probably. His, his his incarnation in Dark Knight was fantastic. Yes. I thought that was done really well. I adore the Dark Knight. I, um, I think Two Face is one of the rare weak, weak links in that film, unfortunately. I, I'd say the opposite. I'd say if anything, actually, I preferred his like the the Two Face in that to the Joker we got in some ways. Oh really? Ooh. Okay, controversial, but fair enough. I really liked it. I thought it was a really good take on it, and it's like the fact that it tied in with the Dark Knight and they used it again, as you say, like 
all of Batman's best villains are to contrast some element of Batman. Yes. Mm. And they used Dent really well to contrast Batman's desire to do good with the constraints of not being a bastard. <laughs> and they contrast that really well with Dent, who, you know, starts off as the, the you know, the perfect politician and then realizes, no, you gotta you gotta fucking bend the rules for this stuff. And it's like Batman is as you say, Batman is 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 two faced in that exact same way. It's I thought they they, they got that comparison between him and Batman they p- perfectly nailed it for me he's got the the whole duality of man thing exactly yeah speaking of like famous Batman villains whose cell do we think this is <laughs> I yeah. think that's Clayface there we go I'll win the cell and you break the ice with the most that's dangerous Vic- Victor Freeze I love I Victor hate that. I love him as a character like he's done I'm from- sorry his name is Fries they fu- they fucking I love how the- so they lampshaded that in Gotham when they were like inter- interviewing Nora Freeze and they're like by the way how do we pronounce your surname is it Freeze or Fries <laughs> like they made it into a thing so here's Harley up here with her bones yeah yeah she's and, not in slug form and there's this electric grid I yep. wonder what's going to happen anyway I'm gonna briefly talk about Mister Freeze because he's one of my favorite Batman characters and he sadly does not appear in this game. See your- the Arnold Schwarzenegger version is brilliant and I love it. But, but like, that's, that's not... Whoa! Right, right, I, I right. like it. I like it. I said it. I'm... What's right. killed kill the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. If... Uh, Batman and Robin is not great. But I think, honestly, one of the best parts of it is if you told me one of the major characters is Arnold Schwarzenegger, comma, but he speaks almost entirely in puns, I'd be like, Yes! That was what was promised, and frankly, that's what was delivered. I I maintain that Arnold is like the only guy in that movie who knows what kind of movie he's in. Like he, yeah, he, which is probably why he, he paid, was paid like paid four ten times. times as much as everyone else in that film. Oh, no, he he, but Arnold gets it. He's like, this is a stupid movie. No, he's he's laughing at everyone because he's like, I'm making a ton of money, and, and I can I, be I, I, don't, I don't have to wear bat nipples for this. Yeah, that's yep, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Batman and Robin. Let's look up some stuff. Ha! Must we? Must Absolutely. Be. Oh, yeah. I, I like I it. I assume Joel Schumacher wanted to portray Batman as fairly gay. Joel Schumacher is... Because Joel gay. Schumacher's very gay, and George Clooney's portrayal of Batman in that is about as homoerotic as Batman's been in major media. Yeah. I mean, with Bat- the Right down to the bat nipples. I mean, Batman is quite homoerotic at the best of times. Yeah. I think he just hypersexualizes everyone. What, yeah. Schumacher? Yeah. What else has he done? You ever seen the movie The in Lost Boys? In that film. Oh, yeah, true. I've not seen The Lost Boys, no. I, yeah. I mean, Lost Boys is like... Vampirism is a metaphor for being gay yeah. in the 80s. Which is, yeah. is, is quite fun, actually. I like The Lost Boys. Works, but, yeah. Like, you're, you're vilified. you got to be a part of a, a, yeah, a can, secret sect of society. I can see I can see your points, right, with... like I, Ivy is super sexualized in that as well. And it's, as is Batgirl. Yeah. One of my favourite lines is like where she kisses Robin to try and like charm him with her pheromones. Like, Rubber lips are immune to your charms. He's, yeah. wearing, he's wearing like weird latex lip things. And it's yeah. Just, oh yeah. It's just not a great movie. Although you can absolutely pour liquid, like paint li- oh, latex on yourself just... like that. Uh, the classic Coolio makes a cameo appearance as Jonathan a Crane. That was going to be the main villain of Batman Unchained that never happened because Batman and Robin was such a fucking... Batman Flop. Unchained. That was going to be Joel Schumacher's film that would follow up Batman and Robin. My god. I'm just saying, obviously the problem was they didn't consult with... Um, Basically, yes. Tim Burton. That was the So Warner issue. Brothers saw like screenings of Batman, the, Batman and Robin as it was being produced and were like, this is pretty good. They greenlit a sequel and then the film came out and they were like, what the fuck is this? Basically. <laughs> Joe Schumacher has apologised for Batman and Robin, which I don't think any profusely. Filmmaker, I don't think a filmmaker should have to do that. Yeah, but I, there's a lot that's fun about it. But it's not a great movie. I, I like Arnold in it. He's just funny. Arnold's Arnold's the worst part in it. Nothing against Arnold Schwarzenegger. That character is just the worst part of it. Uh Joker just abandoned her. Yeah, Cage was Joker also, always abandoned her. Cage was also potentially set to be Scarecrow in this in Batman Unchained. I'd watch the fuck out of that. Oh, here we go. Batman we know how you, you, I assume you know the thing of how Cage was very nearly Superman. Superman. Yeah, and also, he's a massive DC fan. Cage is. Well, here we go. There's Harley Batman confrontation, and it went predictably. You're not merchandise. You're a human being. Quiet. Yeah, I mean, she's obviously been fairly heavily. You see the list of names. 
What was the significance of the names? Like, uh, Clayface was on it. Ah! As in his human name. Or... Basil Carlo, I think. Yeah. Or Boris Carlo or something. Boris Carlo sounds. Familiar. Boris Karlov is a chess player. Yeah, she might be thinking of. Also, a... spooky actor. We see he was an actor back, was way it? back when. I think he played Frankenstein. Yeah. Who am I thinking of then? Yep, I know. You're I'm thinking of Gary Kasparov. I'm not thinking of Kasparov. Or the anal beads guy. Have you what? seen any of this? The anal beads yeah, chest cheating. I have, I this have. is the most fascinating story I've been watching well, for that, ages. Was that yet. confirmed? Is he actually using anal beads to cheat? We still don't know, as far as I'm aware. Um, Kas not Kasparov. Um, Carlson refuses to play him. Yep. Because even though you managed to be like, I will play naked to demonstrate that I'm not wearing any devices. Like, yeah, naked doesn't mean you've not got anal beads up your ass. <laughs> it's just like the whole thing is just fascinating. And I've been loving it because of the statistics involved. That every bit of evidence relies on this person is better at chess than statistically he could, should be. Yeah. But that... Usain Bolt is a much better sprinter than statistically any human at the moment should be. But he's not on drugs or anything. He just... he's He just... You get exceptions. But it's the, the deployment of statistics to be like... This is what people are like, but obviously then you specifically have no room for exceptions because that's not what you use. You don't use statistics to model exceptions. It's it's a fascinating. Yeah. And I do want to discuss it more with you, however. I, I need a short break yet again because mm -hmm. also Batman is infinite and indefatigable because he's been at this for a long time and I, he hasn't, like, taken off the bat suit to go to the bathroom, but nevertheless... Oh, I think he's catheterized in there. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a bathtub in there somewhere. <laughs> Not catheterized because it's too open. No, it's to risk of in, No, yeah. oh my God. too open to risk of infection. Oh, he's just, just like a still like suit a, kind of thing where he just pisses in it. Well, it yeah, into it's water. got like a condom thing that attaches yeah. to a bag that can be moved around and used for oh, excess what's the liquid. Term for that? On that's, that, let's actually let's not dwell on, on that. On that disturbing note, viewership, <laughs> I'm going to call it into this episode. But we love you. Like, share, subscribe. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll be back with you shortly.